My name is Wendy Heesmer and I work for the University of Brighton and Hastings and I'm the widening participation coordinator there. So you apply to university through the UCAS system. That's an online system um, and UCAS is ucas.ac.uk. So it's an online application system. Um, you would see all the questions you'd expect to see really. So you um, would have sections about employment, about education, you need to have a reference. Um, and arguably one of the most important parts of the application is the personal statement. You, in this part of the application, you need to show the academic tutor that's reading that why you want to do their subject, talk about your education and the skills that you've gained, talk about your employment and the skills that you've gained, your motivation, your love for their subject area and let them know why you should be on their course. It's a really good question and probably one of the things that most young people and mature students are really worried about. So there are a lot of really good resources out there. Student Finance England is a good resource. Um, the best resource is actually probably the government's main website and there's an excellent section on there about um, university funding and it breaks it down really clearly for you. Um, the other great source that I always recommend is Martin Lewis's Money Saving Expert website. He has a really great unbiased section on student finance and it's fantastic. So the amount of debt that you would um, accumulate is very different for different students. Some students will live at home and need to borrow less, hopefully. Some students will live in London and, and possibly need to borrow more. The thing I would say about university finance and, and the debt is that there is um, a lot of support available from the government in terms of loans, there are grants, there are university bursaries, there are scholarships. There's a lot of support and I really hope that students can go and do their research and find out a little bit more about that. In terms of the repayment, the government's main aim was that it was affordable. So you only pay your tuition fee and sorry, all your loans back once you're earning £21,000 a year or more. If, that, if your income ever falls below that, your repayments stop. So a student that's earning, say, £25,000, um, they will be paying 9% of their income that's over £21,000, so just on that £4,000, and that's about £30 a month. Um, importantly as well, your debt is wiped after 30 years, so for some students that will make a very big difference. There are so many universities in the UK, excellent universities and a lot of courses. We estimate there's approximately 45,000 courses on offer in the UK. So it's really about thinking about you and how you like to learn or where you want to be. So do you want to be in a university where there are 20,000 other people? Do you want to be at a smaller university where there's maybe only a thousand because that's how you would be happy and how you want to learn? Um, are you going to apply for a course that needs a lot of equipment? Um, nursing, do they have excellent facilities for nursing? Media, do they have state-of-the-art cameras? Um, make sure you find out all that information and that will help you start to narrow down. But the website I would use is, is the UCAS website, that's where all of those courses are listed. Using that UCAS website we've just spoken about, all the 45,000 courses are listed on there. So you can search by region. If you know that you want to go and study in the northeast somewhere, you can select your location. It will just pull you up the universities in that geographical location. Or if you know that you definitely want to do American studies, then you can search by course and then it will just bring you up the universities with those courses that are applicable. So the UCAS application starts quite early in the academic year. So for students that want to study medicine, dentistry or veterinary science at any university or students that want to apply to Oxford or Cambridge, the deadline for those applications is um, October the 15th. For all other courses it's January the 15th, approximately obviously depending on when that falls in the calendar year. However, if you suddenly find the perfect course for you or you suddenly think, you know actually I do want to go to university and you're past those deadlines, you can still submit an application right up to when term would start it's just that you may find that the course is already full. I can't recommend open days any higher. Um, for me, going to a university for three or four years of your life and not visiting them um, just could be awful. You know, what if you don't like their halls? What if the campus is really far away from halls? What if they don't have that state-of-the-art equipment that you need to, to do your course? Um, and I know it could be expensive if you need to look at universities that are, you know, Liverpool, Manchester, and um, that could be quite an expensive, you know, trip, really. But I think in terms of your own happiness um, and making sure that's the right university for you, I think it's invaluable. 
some students will look at that piece of paper or they'll look on the website and think, oh, I don't have those three Bs, I don't have those three Cs, but maybe they've worked in a job for the last 10, 15 years that's really relevant. Um, what I would always advise in that case is to find out who the right person is, have a look on the website, see who the admissions tutor is, see who the lead academic is, and phone them and say, hi, this is me, I have these grades, but I've worked in this job for the last 10 years, and I've managed this, and I've got skills in this. And you never know the answer that you might get back. There are um, teams of people in universities, all universities that are there to help students applying into the university and um, they should be very easy to find on the website of the individual universities. If you're applying to the University of Brighton and Hastings, well then it's me and, and you're, you're very welcome to contact me.